afternoon, everyone. By the time that we heard all the pitches uh, today, the world population actually increased more than 7.6 billion. And out of those, we have more than 1.3 billion that are unidentified. I know that the numbers on my slide state that they are 1.2, but there are many people that we cannot count. Refugees, nomads, people on the move. And out of the 1.2 billion, we have 290 million children under the age of five. They're also invisible. They are unidentified. They are born in that state. If you were here last year at the Blockchain Innovation Conference that was hosted by Vincent and KPMG, this number was 260 million. So it's obvious that the problem is continuing and is growing. And if we think, well, we are here for the money, we don't care for the children, there is also an amount of money that you guys are losing when you donate to NGOs that are taking your money and doing their projects. And this annual loss goes approximately to $10 billion. Now, the consequences, again, beyond that children will not go to school and they will not get their education and they will not get their passports. But there is a bigger problem when such communities ask for refugee in Europe, for example. We are not able, as a Dutch government, to identify them. So how do I know this? Because actually I'm one of them. My name is Tay, I'm co-founder of Taikon.tech. I consider myself to be an expert in the refugee case because I'm Syrian. I'm born in Kuwait. In 1990, the Gulf War erupted and I lost my birth certificate. So I consider myself lucky to be born with a birth certificate and lose it at a later stage. That's why on my driving license, it's written I'm born in Umbekent. And this journey in, in the Netherlands taught me that the problem of identity cannot be solved by one startup or one idea or one technology. And we need actually you in this room, developers, investors, and strat strategic people to help us in our quest. So when I came to the Netherlands, I came as a what we call a knowledge worker, and my work contract was not renewed, and there was no way to go in 2014 except to ask for asylum and stay in this country. This is where Taiken started. Thousands of hours of validation among, from myself, from my personal experience, from all the refugees who lost their birth certificates, land titles, academic certificates, Taiken was born. Taiken in Japanese means supreme authority. We use the supreme authority of blockchain technology to say that certain events have happened in a period of time and validate, authenticate identities. So we built the ANA ecosystem. ANA in Arabic means me. I am the owner of this data. And when someone wants to share or access my data, he needs to take my consent. So we are building a distributed attestation governance system that can be used by NGOs and governments to attest for people's identities. And why do we need it to be a distributed attestation system with a distributed governance model? Because we want to build trust from the bottom up. So we notice that there is villages in Malawi, for example, they have 90% vaccination rates, but they have 10% birth registration rates. That means there is a healthcare worker coming to verify or coming to give a vaccine to a child, but we are not able to count them. So we want to leverage this authority behind healthcare clinics, churches, schools, combine it with the authority of an NGO and give those invisible people a chance to be identified. They cannot use this identity to travel, of course, but if the government 
signs with their keys on such a digital ID, then we are able to make this a digital passport. So we never thought that we are able to get a client on such an idea. It's too futuristic, it's too big. But actually people who can see in the future, they believed in Taiken and believed in our experience and in what we can do. So we partnered with the Dutch Red Cross and the 510 data team to actually help rebuild St. Martin, which has been hit by Hurricane Irma last year. And hurricanes are a repetitive event. So we are allowing the Red Cross to have a one-time registration platform. They come in the island, they can identify people, they can register them, and when they leave, they don't need to delete the data because they are no longer owners of the data. It's the people of San Martin who own it. And the validation happens once, and it can be continued through the community like the churches in San Martin. Now, technology is really great, but it can do nothing by itself. We need a team, we need a human capital, and I'm proud actually to lead such a team, diversified team, different backgrounds, gender balanced, focusing on the UX, focusing on the UI and the technology. So I have my co-founder here, Khalid Maliki, who brings the UX UI experience of 10 years working with the Ministry of Interior. And Katja, she's actually at our uh, booth. She's the honor student at FU Amsterdam with background in mathematics and back-end development. Our strategic advisors, two of them, Mo Levin, Marlous Pomp. Marlous actually is giving us the chance to talk to the Dutch government, Minister of Justice, Minister of Interior, Minister of Foreign Affairs, also to explain to them how cryptocurrencies and blockchain can change the world. So at the end, this what if question can be a window, a window for everyone in this room to participate and help fund Taiken and help bring this solution, not only to St. Martin, but among two many Red Cross organizations that are ready to hop on board. And then together we can prove that we can bring actually hope and not hype to the market. Thank you. Just wondering if you have any questions from the audience? Who has a question? Yes. Thank you. Uh, in the example of St. Martin, yeah. um, it, it, it sounds very good, wonderful. Um, but what in, in, in terms of identity theft or uh, fraud, or what, what, what's the, the story behind that? For instance, I'm on St. Martin. I am a criminal, and I say, well, I lost my passport, but my house, et cetera, et cetera. So I get, do I get a new identity, or how does that work? Well, in, in, in the case that, uh, let's, let's first talk about one thing, that as an NGO, you must help everyone, whether you're yeah. criminal or not. Yeah. So the discrimination here cannot, cannot be valid. But it is valid to say that what if you lost your phone, or what if you lost that piece of paper that holds your QR code and picture and states who you are? Mm -hmm. Well, in that case, you have to go over the process from zero and be re-identified. But let's compare that with the Syrian crisis. You have 52% of the Syrian population invisible. Mm -hmm. I thought I was the only unbekannt guy in the Netherlands. I was happy pitching it. But I think next year, many people will be standing here and saying, yeah, we're also on weekend. Why? Because the root of the cause in identities today is centralization. Mm -hmm. UNHCR is doing a project in WF with uh, the WFP in Jordan. And they're using iris scans to also use blockchain and help refugees. But again, they're using a centralized system. So even today, the blockchain startups that are working in identities, they're falling in the trap of centralization again. We decided to take a route that is very difficult to solve. We're not saying we are doing a decentralized identity. We're just distributing this data or this verification. So back to your question, you will be the only guy maybe in the island or with few others that have lost their IDs. 
as a humanitarian requirement, Red Cross is obliged to delete the data when they leave. Mm -hmm. And how hurricanes happen today and natural disaster and wars on a repetitive pattern, that means Red Cross, every time they enter St. Martin, they have to re-register the whole population again. Mm -hmm. So what we're telling them is, let the users register themselves. We leverage the community to give at least a extra percentage of verification, and you guys are an authority. You can give this high level certainty of this person, because also NGOs, they work with local communities. So there is a collaboration here. The only challenge now is how are you able to achieve governance mm -hmm. on what are you registering in your block and how many blocks are you issuing and what's gonna, all these technical things. Similar to the first startup that pitched, we're also using a delegated proof of stake governance model. Mm -hmm. But why did we choose that? Because we want the witnesses, we want the treasury, we want the auditors, we want the validators all to participate in such a system. How will you pay them? This is where the token model comes, and you incentivize all these players to behave properly in such a network. Mm -hmm. Similar to how Bitcoin mining happens, if you mine against the chain, you will not get a reward. Yeah. So you have the, the, the chance to uh, issue fake IDs or issue wrong names, but if this is a repeating process and the community is noticing that, then you're simply kicked out of that authority that the community gave you to represent your people. Yep. Thank you. Yep.